is Sean Plew from Hitterish.com. Today I want to talk to you about how to hit a baseball. I want to talk about barrel path. I want to talk about the overall philosophy of what I teach. And I want to talk about some of the myths about uh, hitting in general. So first I want to talk about um, some of the things that players and coaches will use to discredit uh, different types of hitting instruction. So one of the very common things you'll hear is that everyone has their own way to hit. You have to do what works for, for you. So first I wanted to show you the four best hitters of all time doing the same move. So on the left here you have Babe Ruth. And you can see where he kind of starts his hands, his, his barrel, and the path of the bat as he goes through the swing. There's a lot of things happening here, but I'll, I'll try to describe it really quickly as best as I can. Um, his swing happens independent of his shoulders. I want you to notice how far the barrel moves before the shoulders ever open up, right? So the front shoulder is still not turned open and the bats dropped back behind him and on playing with the pitch and the hands still haven't come forward and that's not unique to him that same move can be seen in Ted Williams next to him and Hank Aaron next to him and Barry Bonds at the end so you have the four best hitters of all time doing the same movement so there's something to this and there's something to what they're doing and their movement patterns. Uh, there's cl they're clearly doing something right. And whether it's on purpose for these hitters to copy each other, uh, I don't necessarily think that it is. Um, there's something very efficient about the way, they, the way they're moving and the way they're swinging the bat. Um, I've seen kids, I can, I can watch kids sometimes pick up a heavy bat and a lot of times they'll move just like this <laughs> and coaches will come along and teach them, you know, get that loop out of the bat path and, and shorten your swing and push the hands forward and all that. Um, so we need to be looking at the best hitters of all time if we want to maximize our ability as a hitter. Uh, we need to recognize kind of the absolutes. What, what are the similarities? What are the movements that allow these players to be so good. And again, the best way I can describe it is they've learned how to use their hands. They've learned how to create a bat path that uses momentum. And they're very hingy with the hands. They're, they're not really pushing the hands forward too soon. Um, they're able to create momentum back behind them and carry that momentum into the baseball. So these are the four best hitters of all time. And I'm going to show you some more hitters as we go through the video here. These movements are not unique to just these guys. Um, if you look at the best hitters in the major leagues, a lot of these concepts, these absolutes that these guys are performing, are present in the swings of the best hitters today. So let's take a look at that. This is Miguel Cabrera. I want you to notice the same bat path. Now, in this clip, he's already started the swing a little bit. He usually holds the bat a little bit more tipped than this, but you can see this barrel action happening back in here behind him. Hands stay at the shoulder, but the barrel moves. The front shoulder doesn't open up, but the barrel moves. Again, the bat speed is being created. The hands haven't pushed forward, but there's, there's movement in the barrel. That means the swing has started. Look, the ball's halfway to him. And he's twisting the bat around his hands and carrying that momentum into the baseball. This is Josh Donaldson. Very similar position to the guys we saw earlier, except for his hands are at his shoulder. 
Notice how much barrel movement's happening back in here before the shoulders ever turn. This momentum being created is the key behind his success. This bat path right here is what allowed him to become Josh Donaldson instead of minor leaguer Josh Donaldson, right? And if he and his coaches believed, he worked with Bobby Tewksbury, if they believed that we should all just do what works for them, we should all just do what works for us, there is no right way to swing, well, Josh Donaldson wouldn't be Josh Donaldson. Or if we all just said, well, those guys that are the best in the world are just freaks, so they can get away with their swing mechanics, but I can't do that. Josh Donaldson decided he can do that, and he did. Chipper Jones, again, same movements. Look at the front shoulder, stay closed. Look at the bat. Look at the bat, get up to speed. His hands and his elbows work independent of his shoulders to create bat speed. This is how you become adjustable to all pitches and locations. This is how you create early bat speed. This is how you, how you have success as a hitter, point blank. Steps in the bucket a little bit on this swing, but you know what? He's Chipper Jones, he, you know. Barry Bonds did that a little bit. I'm not an advocate of that, but when you do so many things right up top, you can pull off the baseball a little bit with the lower body, is what I'm telling you. So what this does is when you're creating bat speed back in here, that allows the hips to really lead the movement. Ted Williams said in his book, The Science of Hitting, published in 1971, hips lead the hands. Now, this position Chipper has gotten to right here, his hips are already leading his hands because he's counter-rotated his shoulders and his swing has started so deep, his hips are already in position to lead, right? So he doesn't need to turn the hips that far in order to use the lower half and empower the swing. I hope that makes sense to you guys. I can keep my shoulders straight and turn my hips, or I can keep my hips straight and turn my shoulders counter-rotated a little bit. Uh, obviously, we don't want to turn too far, but this is a typical position that you'll see is the front shoulder pointed towards the opposite infielder, the opposite middle infielder. So he's created tension without even having to move his hips. His hips are already leading the movement. David Ortiz. Notice the hands haven't pushed forward yet. Hands are still back. A ton of bat speed has been created back in here. Twisting the bat around his hands and hitting the baseball. Alex Rodriguez. Notice the bat path. Notice how he hides the hands. Look how high, look how long the hands are back here. So he starts his swing and his hands actually go in. They pull in or towards the dugout behind him. This is not throwing the hands. This is not pushing forward. This is actually reaching back for more. More tension between the back leg and the upper body. Reaching back for more bat speed. More room to get the bat behind the ball. All of these are really good high level things that all the best hitters in the world do. Gary Sanchez, same movements, same position, front shoulder pointed toward the opposite middle infielder, back elbow back, bat held vertical, twisting the bat around his hands, bat gets level with the bitch before the hands come forward, bat moves a foot and a half before the shoulders ever open up. Here's another view of Sanchez. 
again, you could see the arms and the, and the bat moving independent of the shoulders. Here's a comparison between Babe Ruth and Gary Sanchez. The swing movements are very similar. The only difference is Gary Sanchez is getting a lower pitch. He swings a little bit steeper, so he's going to drop that back shoulder down in there a little bit more. But look at these movements. Look at these positions. This bat speed is being created behind him. Hands are still back. Then the hands come forward. Here's Mookie Betts. Mookie hit 31 home runs last season. Mookie Betts is 155 pounds. Look at the position he's in. Look at the barrel path. Look at the front shoulder. Look at the back elbow. Look at the tension. Here's Ryan Braun. Pound for pound, one of the best hitters ever. One of the most powerful hitters, pound for pound. Look at the bat path. Look at the tension between the upper and lower body. Look at the front shoulder. Look at the back elbow. Look at the path of the bat. Look at the room. Look at the way he gets on plane. They are all doing the same thing. I want to show you this last one because you can really see the exaggeration here that the swing happens independent of the shoulders. This is Dick Allen. Dick Allen is one of the most powerful hitters to ever live. At 205 pounds, he swung this 40 ounce bat and hit balls out of sight, out of the stadium. Look at his swing mechanics. Look at this turn he's... Look at this. Look how much bat speed is being created. Look at where he holds the bat. Are you kidding me? Who teaches that? Well, clearly he's gained a, an advantage. He's learned how to create this bat speed. Look at this. All of this movement before the shoulders ever open up. I want you to think about what your hands have to do to create this kind of bat speed, this kind of movement in the barrel. Because ultimately, it's the barrel that has to move fast. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. This has been Sean Plouffe from Hitterish.com. Catch you next time.